and to give us a fundamental perspective we are joined by Ashi Anand also Chandan Tapadia is a derivative and technical analyst from Motilal Oswal and Ashi Anand is founder and CEO for IME Capital Gentlemen, a very warm welcome uh, to your trades. Uh, firstly, a quick question on the technical front. Uh, Chandan, uh, uh, nearly it's like a range. If you see on a, though we hit a lot of records this week, we Nifty hit a record, Bank Nifty hit a record for this week. But the range where we started Nifty, we've clo clearly or closely uh, ended on those points only, uh, 50 odd points of gain only. Is there a sign of exhaustion now? Uh, what do you see that the rain, uh, are we in for a consolidated trade for the coming week? How would you trade from here? Uh, hi, thanks for having me. Uh, so we have noticed that Nifty has been moving in a broader range from last seven trading session with support of 23,300. It made a new lifetime high at 23,666, but it closed near 23,500 zone and week on week basis is just up by around 0.15%. So we have seen a flat is close, but the good part is the index managed to hold the support zone. Every small decline was being bought. So we believe that till it holds about 23,300 zone, major trend could remain intact and market has potential to reclaim the recent high of 23,667 and then next rally to us 23,750 to 24,000. So I believe that supply which is near its lifetime high is getting absorbed and that is very positive. And I believe in the next week, if managers hold the key support, the next leg of rally cannot be rolled out. But the good part is the Bank Nifty supported a lot. Bank Nifty was up by around 3% and that contributed a lot for declining other heavyweights name in the Nifty. So I believe that till it holds about 23,300 in Nifty, overall buy on decline could continue for the next leg of rally in the market. All right, Chandan, thanks for you coming in. So 23,300 is a key level to watch out for according to Chandan. Ashi, hi, welcome to the show as well. I'm going to ask you uh, a question about the Indian IT pack. Now, I want to understand a lot changes for this uh, after uh, Accenture's numbers have come out. Slight bit of a miss coming in on that front. But we have brokerage notes saying that this could be a slight bit of a key positive for Indian IT. But the recovery or uh, the progress we could see here could be gradual and spread out over time. Uh, what sense are you making of these numbers and more importantly, the impact that it could have towards external facing IT sector? And if you were to play this sector, uh, how would you do it? Would you, would you still, would you favor large caps over mid caps or what's your strategy when it comes to the Indian IT space? Uh, great. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, in terms of the way we look at IT, right, uh, what you have seen very clearly, and I think you've seen this trend continue for the last two or three quarters, is deal wins across IT com uh, companies continue to be very strong. However, revenue growth and guidances have been a lot weaker than expected, and this is primarily linked to discretionary spends actually being weaker. Uh, now, until you don't see a slightly broader US global economy, and I think what we're looking for is a rate cut cycle towards the end of the year, which could lead to some level of optimism around the economy and businesses coming back, you are likely to remain in this period where discretionary demand continues to be weak. Uh, you've seen that in Accenture's numbers. I think we'll see it in uh, over the coming quarter as well. Uh, but until you don't see discretionary demand really coming back, uh, the space may still struggle to perform. But uh, I think the core part is that the moment you are seeing signs of a global economic recovery and improvement in sentiment in terms of businesses willing to spend on IT, uh, this is a pack which has underperformed quite significantly over the last couple of years. Valuations are very attractive. The longer term growth prospects are very strong. These are very high quality companies in terms of ROEs, quality of the balance sheets, qualities of management, etc. Uh, so it is a space that I think towards the end of the year could become quite interesting, but you do need to see discretionary demand starting to come back. Discretionary demand started to come back. Okay. Ashi, uh, stay with us. Uh, Chandan, uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, Chandan, since we saw that, you know, the FI's long and short ratio has improved significantly now. We're more than 50% long from FI's. And this week itself, of course, on the on the back of the blocks, because the whole week streets saw some 20,000 crore of block. But then we did see FI buying also on one day. That was more than 7,000 crore. And now they've started to turn buyers. Uh, How is the data looking like? In in terms of FNO also? Yeah, so if you look at the FI's long short ratio, uh, this is working well in the Indian market. If I look at the historical data of last two and a half, three years, then the ratio goes near 10 to 15 percent on the lower side, and mm -hmm. on upside, it goes till 70 75 percent. 
And just a couple of days back, the ratio of FI long short ratio was 12 to 13 percent and now turned to 50 percent. So that clearly indicates that FIs covered their short positions. So short covering trigger was there. They built some long position also after a long time. So somehow it seems that sentiment is changing and that may support the Indian market. As of now, the SIP and the flow from the DIs were supporting the market. And now if FIs do the short covering, then further leg of rally could be seen. We have monthly expiry in the next week. And we have seen some short built up in key indices and stocks, but market recovered well from the lower levels. So those short covering could happen in next two, three days. And that also helped the FIs long short ratio to improve. So I believe with the FIs long short ratio turning higher, there's the chances that short covering could trigger and market has potential to reclaim the recent highs and extend the rally to us 24,000 plus zone. And then thanks for that view coming in 24,000. That's a level that uh, you know we're all hoping to see on the index very soon. But gentlemen, stay with us because we'll slip into a very short break on this edition of Your Trades. We'll be right back to keep it going with more on the week that was and what to expect with the one that's up ahead. Stay tuned. The market's ahead. Ashri, I wanted to understand in se uh, specific sectors also. Auto has been in the top gear for the last so many months, but then we did saw some pressure this week and majorly because of a lot of action from the primary market and maybe some profit booking. But then how to tread the sector from here? Because we already, uh, we are, uh, the sector is trading above its five-year average. We understand the reasons like SUV, which has, that, that that's one choice, which has spurred the volumes. And now rural demand also coming back in two-wheeler, tractors. How should one approach? Can we have a... Uh, can, can we have a unanimous approach for the entire basket? We need to be selective for different spaces. How would you advise uh, investors here? So I think when you come to auto, right, the view needs to be a bit nuanced. And uh, the, our view, say, for example, is quite different in terms of a short-term perspective versus a longer-term perspective. So if you're just seeing what auto has done over the last year, right, and uh, momentum which is possibly expected to sustain in the current year, uh, this is actually being driven by a uh, demand recovery that you're seeing off kind of COVID lows. Uh, last year, auto numbers were pretty strong. Uh, you are expected to kind of with the rural economy coming back, uh, potential consumption kind of stops in the budget. Uh, the, I think auto demand is expected to remain reasonably solid. And from that perspective, auto could continue to perform in the current year. Now, within auto, you probably need to cherry pick in terms of what segments you're looking at. Uh, so say, for example, if you're trying to play the rural recovery uh, uh, so someone like a Hero Motors may be a better place. Uh, I think two-wheelers is a space which uh, could see uh, a little more interest in terms of the overall recovery. However, when we the moment we look at auto, uh, we are a bit concerned from a longer-term perspective. Uh, the main threat here is that the whole transition towards EV is really going to change profitability dynamics for the sector. Market shares could shift quite significantly. You may have new players emerging. Now, how, what the shift towards EV is going to do towards the profit pool and who the winners are, I think, is not very clear at this point in time. So the moment auto companies start trading at higher valuations, uh, we start getting a bit concerned that you are not really factoring in this longer-term disruption risk. So really, at this point in time, we tend to look at auto more as a cyclical recovery play as, co as compared to a longer-term fundamental holding. All right, so that's the view coming in on autos from Ashi. But Chandan, I'm going to come to you. Let's keep it going with the sectoral discussion. And I want to ask you about FMCG. Lots of triggers when it comes to this sector. You have some uh, recovery in rural demand that's being penciled in going ahead. Individual com company commentaries have also been positive when it comes to rural demand. You also have the MSP and Kharif crop that has been hiked. And significant FMCG players, and not only FMCG players, you have banks, you have NBFCs, you have a whole host of sectors that have uh, to some extent some sort of an agri exposure what are you penciling in when it comes to rural demand recovery do you think it is uh, a gradual story do you think it is just around the corner and what is the impact going to be on fmcg stocks uh, it's a nice question but first if i reply on nifty fmcg on technical front then we witnessed some profit booking decline in last two weeks i remember on 5th of jane most of the fmcg stocks have rallied well in fact, the Nifty FMCG index itself headed by 5-6%. But after that, profit booking is clearly visible. And most of the FMCG name is finding some supply pressure. Whether we talk about ITC, FM, or Hindustan Unilever, or name like Colgate, Dabur, or Godrej Property, most of the FMCG name witnessed some profit booking in the last couple of days. But I believe 
that entire consumption theme could continue to be in the Indian market. So this decline could be both. If I look at the price behavior, we have seen a corrective move of almost six to seven percent from the recent top, and that provides a better opportunity to go with. So what I'll do, I'll go with the name like uh, Tata Consumer in the FMCG space, with the view that this recent decline provide the bargain buy. Uh, technically speaking, it has corrected from eleven sixty to thousand eighty two levels, and near thousand seventy it provides the best buy. So one can buy with support of thousand twenty five, and again Tata Consumer can see. A range bound bias and up move to us 1160 level. But if you ask me to focus on the consumption theme, I think we should focus on the monsoon or FMCG or some auto name. So I'll focus more on the escorts with the theme that some monsoon related companies could be in focus. So I believe counter like escorts, or if you purely go with FMCG, then Tata consumer or name like Godrej consumer product could provide some bargain buying after the recent decline of last two weeks. Uh, so you wanted to play a rural theme as well as uh, rural theme combined with the auto, rural theme combined with FMCG, okay. Uh, uh, so in that case, Chandan, tell, help us, uh, how would you trade in financial and uh, banking sector? Because the kind of move we saw in this whole week, especially led by the private banks, and of course they were under-owned, valuation comfort was there, Fundamentally, they're improving, asset quality improving, all the triggers now. Is the entire story baked in or we can see some more gains coming in for the coming week for financials? Would you trade in private banks or uh, PSU banks? I segment it was the buzzing during the week. When Nifty was flat, most of the uh, like Nifty funds, financial and Nifty bank were doing well. So Nifty funds, fin financial index is up by around 2.5%. And if you look at the Nifty bank, that also delivered the gains of around 3%. So that clearly indicates some outperformance is visible in both the index. I'll focus more on the private bank. So if you look at the price behavior of Axis Bank, that looks quite promising. It has already seen the strong spurt in last three, four days, holding well about 1230. So Axis Bank could be one name in the private bank with support of 1210, uh, which can accelerate its move to us 1280, 1300 level. If I need to Focus on uh, financial name, then I believe uh, one can look at the name like Chola Finance, where some sort of buying could visible. Major trend is intact. Higher base is clearly visible with support of 1340 zone. So Axis Bank, other private bank, few financial companies could be in focus. And I believe some sort of relative strength and the st sector rot rotation could help these sector uh, to perform. I can also focus on ICC Bank with the view that already it has seen a decent Consolidative move of last seven weeks and a small follow up above 1160, 1165 could start the next leg of rally in private bank like ICC. Right, mm -hmm. Thanks for that view coming in, Chandan. Ashi, I'm going to shift focus to you. Uh, tell us how you are navigating the markets next week. What are your stock specific ideas that you'd like to share with our viewers? Uh, so so uh, we are longer term PMS, right? So we it's okay. not really week to week. But I think the key thing that we are looking at in terms of the coming year is we really focusing on the upcoming budget to just kind of understand is how big is the change in uh, the government expenditure. Uh, so far, you've had year after year capital expenditure actually outpacing revenue expenditure. I think given the kind of election results, there is expected to be some kind of a shift out here. Now, in terms of, if you look at the last year, you had certain sectors, right? Namely, real estate, capital goods, anything infra-related, railways, defense. Uh, it was certain sectors or certain segments of the market which are largely driving the overall market. And a lot of the erstwhile heavyweights, a lot of the consumption names, a lot of banking, IT, all of these really underperformed quite significantly. Are we really looking at the kind of budget to understand is there any change in tone? And therefore, would you see some kind of change in terms of the market performance drivers over the current year? What we do kind of expect at some level is that as compared to last year, where there was a big divergence between the, all of the capital form, capital formation related uh, parts of the market really driving overall market performance and big lagards, we expect this year to be a lot more balanced. But we expect to really get signs and sense on this in terms of the budget. And I think that will really drive portfolio positioning. At this point in time, we are having we are we've taken a balanced view. We've got enough investments across both of these pockets, and I think uh, portfolio positioning will emerge as we get greater clarity on how the new government's policies are going to shape up. We 
have uh, uh, two votes coming in for escorts at least. Ashi also likes escorts and uh, Chandan also already gave his go ahead for escorts. Uh, uh, Chandan, you want to add some more picks here, some trades which our viewers can uh, bank on for the coming week? Yeah, I can again discuss about escort. Uh, are we are positive on the Nifty Oto. And I think this is the time for monsoon. And I'm sure most of the viewers will enjoy their weekend with monsoon in most of the part of the country. So if I look at the price behavior, this stock is really doing well. One of my preferred name from last couple of quarters. It has been making high tops, high bottom on the weekly chart. Uh, after the consolidative move of last five days, again, it started a positive move with good or decent trading and the delivery volume. So I believe the momentum could extend here and it could be the one of the name which can outperform the broader market. So with support of 4200 to 4245, we are expecting a rally towards 4500 to 4750 in the escorts. Second trade, uh, we can focus on the Bharti Airtel. Uh, we believe that selective telecom companies could do well. Again, the index rebalancing was also the reason. Uh, major trend is positive and we have noticed that whenever this stock corrects by more than three to five days, immediately it witnesses buying interest because technically it is it is holding well above its 50-day exponential moving average. So major trend is positive and a small profit booking decline of last five days provides a fresh leg of buying interest. We have seen a surge in trading volume, which clearly indicates the bargain buy. So Bharti Airtel could be other name with support of 1385. We are expecting fresh run up to us 1475 to 1500 level. So escorts and Bharti Airtel could be two preferred pick in auto and telecom major. Chandan, so well, lots of positivity coming in on escorts. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Chandan, as well as Ashi, on that note, we're going to let you go. We'll if you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.